Hey, it's Dry Bear. Now that I have posted a full class tier list for the launch of Diablo 4, focusing on efficacy, strength, and meta for the classes, I wanted to follow that up with a very different kind of tier list. So today I'll be ranking the classes on which ones I think are the best made. Regardless of strength or how strong they're gonna be or how they're going to fit into the meta, which ones look the coolest, feel the coolest, are the most visceral and realistic, have a nice strong theme, and the variety in the gameplay is interesting, and their game design is also something that has high creativity in it. And I think the differences between this tier list and the class tier list for launch, well, might even surprise you. But first, you should come hang out with me on my live stream. I'm live every single day on twitch.tv forward slash drybear. If you don't come hang out, the next time you get stir fry, they're gonna be out of the noodles that you like and you'll have to wait an extra few minutes for a new batch to come out. So as I did with the tier list yesterday, I'd like to focus on just some general categories here. For the classes, we're gonna be talking about theme, which is how well do they encompass the theme they're intended to and that aesthetic and feel that they go for and how strong is that theme throughout their character, their lore and their story and development. The gameplay feel, which is what it feels like to play the class, their basic attacks, attack animations, sound effects, their abilities, how it feels to cast their abilities, their skills, everything and beyond that. And the next, uh, we're going to talk about the visual effects, which is the actual VFX of the abilities themselves, the firing and how they look and how it presents itself on screen. Then we'll talk about variety, which is how much depth and breadth of character exists in the game design of the class overall, how many different ways can you play it, and how do those feel unique and different from each other when you're playing it. And lastly, we'll talk about a general category of creativity. How safe were they being with the class? Uh, how straightforward was it? How kind of already explored was it as an archetype? And how many risks did they take in developing new ideas uh, and new concepts for a class uh, in this game especially that might have shocked people or challenge people or maybe even open people's eyes to different styles of gameplay that may not have existed before. And I'll leave the scores up on screen throughout the whole video so you can match and compare the classes together. And again, this is all just my opinion based on perspective and past experience developing games and playing at Diablo 4 uh, quite extensively. So you're welcome to have your own opinion. If you have a different tier list down below for this kind of concept, then feel free to let me know. I'd be curious to hear from you guys on what you think. Starting at the top of the tier list, the S tier or the highest scoring for this tier list for me is going to be Necromancer. Uh, I definitely have some concerns on their viability towards endgame. Uh, they have some good overpower builds and then there's a question of how well we can maintain minions if they're going to be manageable or not. That's always a big question when you have minions or pets or summons in a game like this is how well do they scale? Can they stay alive? Can they do respectable damage? But irrespective of that, just looking at the class how it's designed and developed. Let's go through the categories. When it comes to theme, I think they actually nailed this one for Necromancer. Necromancer has had so many different incarnations for across not just Blizzard games, but just any games in general. Any fantasy game, Necromancer has tons of different ways to represent itself. The general idea is that they raise the dead, but that extends itself sometimes to miasma, plague, sickness, death, blood, all kinds of these other themes and tones that match itself into Necromancer. And I think they did a great job putting in ideas of a Grim Reaper with scythes and shadow and, and darkness with the summoning of the dead and having those do your bidding, but also being able to buff them and, and you know make it part of your general gameplay to interact with them. Plus, they have the blood aspect, which I think is really cool. It's something that they played with quite a lot in general, and I think this uh, representation of blood fits the theme really well. The gameplay feel for Necromancer, I would say, is a four. It's almost a perfect score. I definitely think there's some feel things that they could improve on, especially on some of the spells and how they cast and, and how you would actually feel them represented in the world. I also think they could have done a much better job in making the curses feel more impactful. I think one of the major misses for Necromancer from a design perspective has been just the curses. I mean, they kind of land and they're there, but it doesn't feel like you know, I, I, when a curse goes out, I would want to feel like I'm sucking the life out of them and I see more than just an icon or a, a passive glow that shows up and I, I want to feel like it's very impactful when I use it. Uh, but other than that, I think overall the gameplay feel is really strong for Necromancer. When it comes to visual effects, I think Necromancer is definitely one of the tougher ones to get right. 
Uh, oftentimes, and I'm sure if you've experienced it in games that you play, when you go down the road of death and poison and, and curse and all that, it can sometimes get just a little bit too visually cluttered. Sometimes it's just too goopy or too realistic for the art style or not realistic enough. Or sometimes it's just bubbles everywhere and it gets really, you know, I, and I think they did a great job with the VFX, especially the models and the meshes they use for the corpses. A generic corpse is nice, but it's, it's just enough to know that it's there. But I feel like the corpses aren't so loud and obnoxious that they get in your way. And I think all of that feeds itself really well. So I gave them a five for VFX on Necromancer. When it comes to variety, I also think that it is a five. Uh, one of the two classes in the game that has exceptional variety, um, mostly just because of the way that they handled their minions in this game, which at first I wasn't a major fan of. I actually did not like the way the minions were created and integrated into the kit for Necromancer in general, uh, but it's grown on me and I actually, I, I appreciate the direction that they took for it and how that represented itself. I like the fact that you can play with a very tanky build. I like the fact that they included thorns as an option in Necromancer. I like the fact that you can have tons of different ways to sacrifice or keep or modify your minions. The fact that every minion has three different variants for it. Each of those variants has different buffs you can choose, or you can choose to not have that type of minion at all and gain some kind of statistical benefit. They also have casting in various forms. They have uh, positional options. They have melee. They have ranged. They also have some tanky options that fit really well. They can build off of their bone spells. Their bone, their shadow, and their blood abilities feel rather unique in how they play and how they're implemented and the engagement ranges and effective ranges that they have. And I feel like some of the other casters like Sorceress, I, I wish were a little bit more like Necro and that the variety came through stronger in how you play, right? Whereas each time you change your build for Necro, I feel like it feels meaningfully different than a different build so that you start to feel like you're playing something new even though you're playing the same class. And lastly, for creativity, I actually gave them a four. I was very close to giving Necro a five for this, but I think they probably could have done maybe a little bit more variation on the spells that we expected. Uh, I think there's definitely some room to expand on for Necromancer, and I'm curious what they're gonna do for the expansions that they have planned. But I think the big thing to hone in on here for me is the evolution of the pet system. Most ARPGs, RPGs, classical RPGs, when they do minions, it's very straightforward. I have an ability that has some kind of modifier or cooldown on it. When I activate it, it summons minions and they do things. Uh, some, some games like Lost Ark uh, or, you know, you get summoning builds in, in traditional RPGs, sometimes they'll do modifiers where you can have a secondary active that makes the pet feel more involved in the process and typically for games like this you're just kind of hitting that nail on the head of people that like being summoners and you get them to fulfill that fantasy without having too much variant for it. it's more about getting as many minions as you can making them as strong as you can but i think the fact that you can resummon them at max to buff them or heal them or protect them and that so many things in your tree interact with how your minions behave and operate and they managed to give us a large variety of minions without completely cluttering up the skill tree, I think was pretty risky. Uh, this definitely could have not been pulled off. And I think you saw that feedback when the game was first being publicly tested, is that why do I have this non-dedicated skill slot for my minions where I can't have more abilities? Why don't you just put the minions in the skill tree? Why can't I just modify them directly? Why does it have some other thing? So I think Creativity wise, they took some pretty big risks with how they manage minions. And I actually really like and appreciate the fact that they did. If they had gone the more traditional route, I think Necro would have been worse off for it and probably have been a worse class if they just went for the basic representation of minions. Next up for me in the second slot is Rogue. And kind of similar to Necromancer, I was actually joyfully surprised with this class there was plenty of things about this class that i just I, I didn't know what to think when i first saw the trailers and the announcements for me and i've talked about this in other videos i always loved the diablo 2 representations of the rogue archetype uh, and i thought that some of the manipulations they had in d3 were good but didn't scratch the same itch and when i saw that rogue was announced as a catch-all archetype for the assassin the bowman the archer 
the trap maker, all of that. I was kind of curious and, and a little bit disappointed on how it would represent, but it actually ended up being a very amazing representation of this archetype. So let's go through the categories. For theme, I gave it a five. I think it, it's very easy to fall into some tropes for the rogue archetype where you just have a basic stealth, a basic backstab, uh, you throw some daggers and that's it. And I think they tried to incorporate more of a wider breadth in skill set for rogue that you don't always see in other games. And I think what's actually happening here is they took the hunter, uh, archer, ranger aesthetic and archetype and mixed it with the assassin, rogue, thief and put that all together into as well as like a saboteur, trap maker, bombardier. They put all of those together into this overall house that keeps the archetype of rogue. And I think that was awesome because it means that we get to have so much more breadth in how the character plays. It's not just I stealth, I backstab, I stealth, I backstab, I throw a knife. It's got so much more going on there. And the fact that you can have modifiers like it's not just poisoning, but you're imbuing your weapons, which means you have more than just uh, status effects on them. There's other options for that as well. They have ranged options. They have melee options. They have traps. They have stealth, but they can also apply stealth in area. And I think they really nailed it in how they fit this archetype. So I think the theme for me is a five. Gameplay feel, I think, is also a four. I actually, I don't know. I didn't, I didn't feel like any class really hit that gameplay feel of five. Uh, let me know how you feel about that. I feel like, and maybe when we finally get to end game and the build is fully maxed out and we can get to max Paragon and everything's working, maybe that hits it. But there wasn't anything gameplay feel wise of pressing the buttons and moving around and seeing your abilities hit things. It was a perfect five for me, but most of them were a four. So I, I definitely think they did a great job in that. It just wasn't anything that like, if you play a lot of games, I, I wouldn't feel like Diablo 4's gameplay feel so far and what we've been able to play has been uh you know record breaking or anything there it's just great it's just it's good and it's enjoyable so i gave rogue a four for visual effects i gave them a four as well i think they just like necromancer they did a good job representing some of the darker aesthetics without being grungy or kind of uh irritating or obnoxious uh so they had a good representation there i think the traps are easy to read they have a good representation in the world I think you also have some good ranged attacks that have good pacing and momentum and all of that. So I think overall, uh, I actually gave them for visual effects a four as well. So I think the Rogue just feels really good to play. For variety, I also gave them a four. Uh, and part of that is just because of what we talked about already, where they have so many archetypes built into one. This is like, you know, this is your true ranger. They know uh, they have multiple weapons they've mastered. They have uh, ranged weapons of various kinds tricks, uh, tools, deployables, traps, rigs. They have all these different things that really fit into it. And I think you can play your rogue if they do a good job of balancing it once they see how the game is played uh, at its maximum. Once that's all balanced out, I think they have a lot of really cool variety. You can play rogue at mid-range. You can play it at close range. You can play it as lo at long range. You can play the true assassin subtlety style rogue going for the backstabs. You can go imbuement and a little bit more elemental. I love the fact that they included a saboteur grenadier style where you can use grenades and bombs and traps uh, with various different modifiers and strengths that can go with that. You can also go with a, a you know, a, a grab bag where you just grab a bunch of a, different modifiers and skills of various types and put them together and be reasonably successful. So I think that for me is really great. And I actually... Uh, I <laughs> I don't know about you, but sometimes when the uh, the rogue assassin thief archetype is done so on the nose in a lot of fantasy style games, to me, it just feels very boring. It's just it's so straightforward. There's not a lot of variety or depth to it. And I think that this is one of the better representations of that archetype in gaming. So creativity for rogue, I actually gave them a five. And then for variety, I gave them a four. Next on the list for me is Druid. I think it has a lot of great strengths and there's some uh, some misses as well for me, some some weaknesses that kind of bring it down, but on the average is actually pretty good. So uh, for me, Druid theme, I gave it a four. I was very much hoping that the representation of Druid in Diablo 4 would reignite some of the things that we loved about Diablo 2, the shape-shifting, the transformations, uh, the elemental magic and uh, all of that. Because I think some of the, the druid strengths 
that uh, we loved about Diablo 2 kind of went to Wizard in Diablo 3, and so it kind of uh, alienated a little bit of what the Druid was, uh, and it kind of made it harder for that to come in true fruition. So I actually really think the theme for Druid in this game is strong. It's quite, I put it as a four. It's not like, you know, perfect five out of five, but it's very, very good. And I think that uh, the differences in their companions, they have nature represented very strongly in how they uh, move about the world, how their abilities work, how their kit comes together. I think the theming is very strong. The bear feels mighty and forceful. The wolf feels relentless and aggressive. The storm magic is meaningfully different from uh, whiz, uh, from sorceress. It could have been more, but it still definitely feels different. And the fact that they have a lot of earth magic and earthy tones, I think all represent that theme really well together. So I gave them a four. For gameplay feel, and I know this might uh, tick some people off here, but I actually think that the majority of the enjoyment that you get out of Druid comes from their builds and their legendaries. If you look at their abilities by themselves, I think they could have done a much better job in making the gameplay feel stronger. Uh, it, I, I think it's just the creativity and the expression of builds that makes Druid feel so good. Uh, the abilities themselves and the general gameplay, like if you had no legendaries, no synergies, and you were just pressing buttons, I would say that Druid is probably one of the weaker classes in the game for gameplay feel, just because... I know it just feels very straightforward, very, uh, you know, blocky and chunky, uh, but not in like a very satisfying visceral way. Um, it's not bad. I, I gave it a three for gameplay feel, uh, but I definitely think they could have done better in making the, the, the impacts feel more impactful and have it feel very well represented in how they play and how they manifest themselves. Next up is visual effects. And again, this might tick some people off, but I feel like Druid is the weakest in the game for VFX. I think they just went way too safe with the visual representation of the effects and the spells and the abilities for Druid. It just feels, uh, I don't know, it just feels so simple and safe. And it, there wasn't really anything about the VFX that wowed me about Druid. It just feels like it's kind of there. and. This could have been them just being cautious, right? It's very easy for wind type effects to get extremely obnoxious and annoying on screen. They make the visibility very, very low. And it's also very hard to understand what's going on when you have these going on. So it could be that they just wanted to play on the safe side and just made everything a little bit more vanilla, clear, easily represented, and it doesn't get in the way, right? The vines kind of hide underground. The wind is very light and you can't really see it. Uh, I think they wanted to just, hopefully that's what they were going for, is they just wanted to, to favor visibility and uh, gameplay readability over the visual representation. And obviously that means that it's going to take a visual hit in, its, in, in, in how it's employed. But I think for me, the visual effects, uh, it's the only, only class in the game that has a two. I think they just, I don't know, they, they were just kind of uh, simplistic and a little bland. Uh, and maybe, you know, when you, when you have lots on the screen, that's, that's the sacrifice you make, and that's just how it feels. But I think VFX-wise, it's just it's there wasn't any, anything outstanding or uh, notable for me when it came to Druid. However, that being said, I think the greatest strong point for Druid is their variety and creativity in gameplay, and that's why I think people really enjoy Druid. I mean, obviously, you might just have an affinity towards nature magic and transformation, shape shifting, uh, animals, and uh, spiritual effects. But I think in general, uh, uh, I think they have the best, uh, one of the best for variety. I also think the fact that they can do, uh, they're the only cast in the game that has a very interesting set of melee abilities and a very interesting set of ranged and casting abilities. And then a mixture of the two, they have summoning and pets. I feel like they bang on all the different cylinders that people would enjoy for gameplay of a game of this type. And they all exist within one class. You can play melee caster, you can play ranged caster, you can play hybridization caster, you can play elemental caster, you can play shapeshifter, melee, tanky, upfront, physical damage, crit damage, poison damage, dot damage, execution damage. You can also do just mixtures of all of those put together. I think if you are looking at the, the biggest breadth in gameplay, I think Druid has it in spades in, in as far as variety and creativity. I think that that kind of goes hand in hand. I have uh, variety at five and creativity at four and that they definitely did a good job 
trying to mix all those together. I feel like what Druid is, is what something like Sorceress should have been or could have been. So compare Sorceress and Druid together in their variety and creativity. Uh, Sorceress has three elements to play from. They, I, I think they have a lot in common in their general usage. And going from element to element, you still kind of play the similar way. You use the same utility skills. Uh, Lightning has different where you collect orbs and you have different range procs. You have more cancel movement and casting. Uh, Fire has a lot of channeling and dots and debuffs and things like that. And then Ice has a lot of stand in place, big, large AoE effects. But it doesn't, it, you know, compare the variety and how diff the different builds feel. I think they all, they feel a lot more similar than you would get for something like Necromancer or Druid in the caster department. And then even beyond that, on top of having all of that, Druid also has a summon build. Those summons work well in all, a lot of their builds. And they even have a tanky build and they have a melee physical damage, uh, you know, carry style build and a mixture of the two, right? So there's not really a crazy amount of that variety in something like Sorceress, but Druid, I think, does it really well. And in future expansions and updates, I would love to see some of that creativity and, and variety in build diversity make its way into the classes that are below Druid on the list for that very reason, because I think that they do it really well. Next on the list for me is Sorceress or Sorcerer. Uh, my main, my primary class that I played the most of in Diablo 3, absolutely love Sorcerer, Wizard, Sorceress, and the, uh, the elemental magic. So let's go through it. Theme-wise, I think it's a four. I they, they think they, they kind of captured that aesthetic with the way the gear looks, the items, how they hold, how they talk and behave, how everything is visually represented and mixed in with the classes, and how it fits into the game. I think this is exactly what I would expect of an elemental master or a master of magic in general. So I think the theme was a four overall. Gameplay feel, I actually had at a three, very similar to Druid in that, in that regard. I think if you look at Again, without synergies, without build, uh, without theme, if you just looked at pressing the buttons and how it felt to press the buttons without knowing that if I do this, this triggers this, and then I get some bonus because I have this item equipped, the general ability usage, I had it a three. I think it's about average. There wasn't anything that really made me feel like, wow, you know, lightning struck down and scorched the earth and rocks went flying and uh, you know, like I hit this and a big damage number went ac across my stream, uh, on my screen. And I feel like they definitely could have done a lot more to make the abilities themselves feel better and feel more represented. Again, this might get better at endgame. Maybe it's just an animation thing or a cast speed thing or an attack thing, but it it's possible that that's how it fits in. But just general like gameplay feel, I would say that most of the other classes in the game, just for pressing buttons, feel a lot better than Sorceress. Not to say that Sorceress is bad, it just, I think that the other classes did it better. When it came to visual effects, just the visual effects themselves, I gave Sorceress a four. I think they, uh, kind of similar to Druid, they were a little bit safer in representation and how things read, like readability seemed like a very big thing for them. But unlike Druid, I think even though they did a good job making things readable, like even here you can see the ice encasement here, you can still see the character inside of it, you can still see the enemies, but it has this really nice visual representation to it. So I think visual effects wise, Sorceress, I gave her a four. I, I think they did a great job in blending readability with visual aesthetic and the, the timing and pacing and the trails that come off of what they do. I think all of it looks really good. I love the Inferno Ultimate, the snake that coils around, the uh, the incinerate flames that come forward, the lightning strikes that come out. Uh, I think overall they did a really good job on the VFX, uh, so I gave it a four on that. For variety, I gave Sorceress a three, and we already talked about this uh, when we talked about Druid, but I feel like Sorceress and Barbarian are both missing something. Uh, and maybe you agree, if you agree, let me know, but I feel like you know, if you look at the, the variety for like Druid and Necromancer, how many different ways they can approach their toolkit and mix things together. And you can look at Sorceress and Barbarian, and I feel like they just don't have that level of variety. They don't have that ability to just really live it up and mix. It's not like, like they're in a toy, a candy store, picking out all their favorite candies and, and mixing them together in a pot. They definitely have good foundation, a strong theme, but I feel like I needed like one super unique thing. Uh, whether it's like Archon form from Diablo 3 or something like they can summon a master elemental that appears and that has different effects they can interact with uh, or they can create some crazy thing that, I don't know. 
They need to have something else in the kit that made me feel like kind of shock and awe that wasn't just uh, delivering on what I expect out of Sorceress or something a little bit more there. So Variety, I gave a three and Creativity, I gave a three as well. I think they were very safe when they made Sorceress and maybe that was the plan. They just felt like there were so many people that love Sorceress and Wizard that they didn't want to try and innovate too much and mess with the formula. And they just wanted to give people what they expect and, and maybe that's maybe that's fine. But for me, I think relative to the other classes where they took bigger risks and they changed things uh, for the sake of just being interesting, uh, they did more of that with other classes than they did with Sorceress. And last on the list for best made classes for me is Barbarian. And I was super torn on this one in general, uh, but let's go through the actual categories and talk about why I put Barbarian at the bottom of this list. For theme, I think Barbarian was a three for me. It's the things that I was worried about for Rogue, I think kind of ended up coming through for Barbarian. Barbarian just feels a little too on the nose. Uh, and it didn't feel like they kind of brought to life some of the aspects that I would have hoped for Barbarian or even had something brand new. The arsenal aspect, the weapons master is pretty cool. And I like having that in the game for Barbarian. But much like Sorceress, I wish that there was something new, something different, something unique and something that just kind of created this secondary or, or tertiary play style that felt very much in the Barbarian vein. You know, the sort of things that they always wish they could have done with Barbarian but hadn't been able to in the past or bringing something else forward or some kind of, you know, I, I don't know. There could have been so many different ways they could have taken it. I feel like they very much, because it is one of their quintessential classes, it was one of my mains in Diablo 2, uh, I feel like they they kind of just wanted to make sure that they got the play style that people expected out of Barbarian. And to me, there wasn't really anything that was like, oh, wow, that's really cool and out there. I think the only thing that, that kind of gets close to that is the Arsenal idea, which I don't feel like ended up being as well executed or as well uh, integrated into the game itself uh, for just a general, you know, like I'm a weapons master kind of feel. But uh, that's what I had down for theme. Now, that being said, for gameplay feel, just walking around and pressing buttons, right? Not synergies, build making, um, theming or concept, just pressing buttons. I think Barbarian is one of the best in the game. It feels really good to give a, a mob DOS boot, just boot them in the face, they run into a wall, or you make the ground shake, or you have a big slam using your weapons. I think they did a really good job making this class feel heavy and, and guttural and mean and very barbaric. Uh, so I think gameplay feel-wise, I gave it a four. For visual effects, I also gave it a four as well. I wish they went a little bit more ham on some of the earthy effects. I love some of the earthquake and rippling and lava uh, aesthetics that they had in Diablo 3. Now I know this game, art style-wise, is a little bit more muted relative to Diablo 3, and it's a little bit more kind of dark and, and uh, uh, duller, um, in, in just from an art style standpoint, not in a bad way, but just that's kind of the theme for the game. But I do feel, I wish that they went a little bit stronger and a little bit more ham with the earthy effects uh, that they kind of created for Barbarian. Uh, or maybe they just didn't want to kind of step on the toes of Druid, I don't know. But I think generally, gameplay, feel, and visual effects were four for me, very good for Barbarian. They didn't try to make it more than Barbarian's supposed to be. I feel like the Berserk feels good, the Bloodthirst feels good, the Bleeding feels good, the, the hits of the weapons feels good. Uh, the stomping and kicking and throwing and shouting and summoning, all of those feel really good and look really good for Barbarian. When it comes to variety, I gave the Barbarian a two. I think similar to Sorceress, while there are different, I mean, the skill tree uh, representation, like how it branches and moves is the same as it is for other classes. But I feel like for Barbarian and for Sorceress and Barbarian even more so, it didn't feel like there was enough that like, even though you're picking different abilities, they don't feel different enough for the variety to be very strong. And maybe that's fine. Maybe when you're playing Barbarian, you get exactly what you want. You just want to be the bloodthirsty warrior and you like the way it feels and you don't need a lot of variety in the gameplay. But as an individual category of vertical for this class, I think Barbarian ended up on the short end of the stick for variety and in how they feel. I mean, you can go through, I've made builds, uh, you know, almost 10 builds for every class now. I've been making more going through all the way through it. And I can tell you that Barbarian for me even though I am making new synergies, new builds, new items, new uniques, new legendaries, new Paragon boards, it's still, when you're playing it, it still feels reminiscent of the last one you just made. So uh, I think from that standpoint, the variety for me, 
for Barbarian uh, was a 2, and the creativity was a 3. I think if they didn't have the arsenal system in the game, it probably would have been a 2 or a 1. That was like one of the newer things that they did for Barbarian in general. But I, I, I wish that they had more. There was just more Barbarian stuff. More. I don't know, like something uh, just to make it feel more unique. And, and they can definitely do that in an expansion, right? If everyone gets a new part of their skill tree with new skills and Barbarian is just super wacky out there. You know, you could go into like Warhammer, Bloodlust, Corn Berserker. Uh, you can have all kinds of things where, you know, you go into like Dante Mo with your health drains and you get all these crazy like summons and blood and some, I don't know. There's plenty of, plenty of things that they could have done that to me would have been uh, a little bit more unique and interesting, but I think they kind of hit the aesthetic. So if you're looking for, if you're looking for Barbarian, I think it is a, a fine representation of Barbarian and I think it feels good to play. And if it's exactly what you want, then go for it. But I think just variety and creativity wise, uh, it is one of the weaker made classes in the game, just uh, how it ends up being imparted and, and represented in the game itself. But yeah, if it, Sometimes there's just people that they, they know what they want. They like what they want. They, <laughs> they, they like vanilla. They want vanilla, no sprinkles all the time, all day, every day. And that's what they like. And maybe that's what the barbarian is for some people, uh, that it just feels good. And they want to be a mighty warrior. And this fits the bill. But for these categories, I had to, uh, by comparison to their classes, rank it a little bit lower. So that is my best made class tier list, irrespective of meta and strength and uh, viability, just kind of how the classes are overall. And I hope it served as a nice uh, data point for people that are choosing the class that they're looking to represent. Come hang out with me on the live stream. Leave a comment down below. Leave a like down below if you like the video. It helps me out a lot. See ya. If you enjoyed yourself today, leave a like down below. You can support me and my work on Patreon and view Patreon exclusive content. Link in the description. Thank you so much for tuning in and I'll see you in the next one.